how are the uh, injured guys doing? I saw Kendrick putting up some shots and, and Malik doing some pick and roll with DJ. Yeah, they're making progress. Uh, still day to day, you know, won't really know for sure until we get closer to the open at night uh, if they're available. Um, but doing some encore work, yes. I thought it was Wayne out. Wayne did form shooting only. You know, the other guys moved around more. Frank, um, not necessarily tied to uh, the upcoming game, but just coaching LeBron James. He's won a championship uh, while you've been on the sidelines. Uh, it, it seems as the season goes on, there's some record that he's breaking on, on a weekly basis. Uh, do you notice that? And do you ever acknowledge that with them? Um, uh, and do you have anyone like on your staff that like keeps track of these things? Like, like as he notches off 30,000 points or whatever it may be? Yeah, not in, a, in an official capacity. Um, you know, our PR team, more than anyone, will just kind of let us know, like, hey, he's, you know, he's going to pass this person, you know, with this many points or rebounds or whatever. Um, you know, social media, you see it on air sometimes. Uh, so nothing in official capacity, but you know, when it happens, you congratulate him on it. And, um, you know, but it's really, you know, he's, he's very in the moment, you know, more than, um, you know, thinking about those big picture things. I think, I think it's more of a reflect after the fact uh, type of thing. And, you know, when you cross those milestones, you know, you feel good about it, but you know, you either won a game last night or lost the game, and you know, what's our, what's the next step in our process? Practice tomorrow, all those types of things. He, he really stays in the moment a lot. Frank, Frank uh, when you coached against Mel over the years, what do you think was like the most difficult move of his to do and prepare against? You know, uh, I actually thought like as good as he was in the post, like his pin down. You know, ability to, to score off of pin downs. You know, you had to chase over and uh, and, and force him inside um, because of his rise of ability. You know, um, the quick trigger, uh, quick release, catch and shoot threes. You know that he would he would get off. Um, you know, a lot of times our guys in, in Indiana, we we'd get there, but you know, by the time it touches his hands, it's gone. You know, so you really had to arrive on the catch. Um, which is something that is, you know, still with him today, um, as you see in these preseason games. Um, you know, to have that that type of size and a quick release and proficiency at the three-point line, you know, that's that's probably the other thing. Frank, you've got guys like LeBron and Russ that are capable of throwing like these incredibly difficult passes. Um, there's probably just some built-in turnovers that come from players who see the court that way. Um, is that something you just kind of have to live with, like some some of those turnovers? I know I did perfect for right, that would be zero, but realistically that's not possible. Kind of like what's did your you say Russ, like? LeBron, and Rondo? Rondo did you say well. did you say that too? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nice sneak in. Well, there's there's a obviously a, an an enormous level of creativity uh, with those guys. They're exceptional uh, with their vision and their ability to deliver the ball. Um, you know, there definitely is. Uh, you know, an element of, you know, it's going to come with some turnovers, um, but we just don't want to be careless. You know what I mean? Like we want to want to have a, a value the the ball, value the possession mindset. You know that uh, that we're pushing those guys to do. It got really out of control in the in the first half last night to the point where, you know, we talked about there's you know, hey there's new there's new pieces and new teammates, and then there's just being careless. And you know we were just being careless, and we did a lot better job in the second half protecting the basketball, and that's going to be the mindset um, you know going forward. That hopefully that that carelessness stays in the preseason, and um, you know, but there is an element of you know you have to to, to get the passing, you know, and the assists. Uh, you have to live with uh, with some of that. Right. What's going to go into your process in the side of the start the line, the line side, AD plus? A lot of conversations, um, both with the coaching staff, uh, the front office, and with uh, you know our, our captains, you know, and uh, you know see what uh, what everybody's feeling about it. Um, obviously, it, it, there are two really good, more than two really good uh, situations for how we would go with our starting lineup. Uh, you know, we feel good about all of them. You know, it's just where we're going to land on, and you know we don't want to um, be in a situation where we're changing too often. You know, so you know. Hopefully, we can have success with uh, whichever way we choose to begin with, and uh, and stick with that. Are you excited who is starting on Tuesday night? 
I've got a good idea, but we won't we won't release release that until Tuesday night, obviously. Thirty minutes before test, or are you going to tell us on Tuesday? Probably thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, a, a little bit of uh, ignorance on my part here, but AD has been talking about um, how in film you guys review the element of randomness and how that can lead to plays for you guys. So I was curious for context on that. Is he talking about in transition? Is he talking about in general offense? What, what does he mean by that? Yeah, just how we're we're flowing into our offense, you know, this year we're encouraging more randomness, um, you know, more cutting, uh, you know, just to keep the defense off guard, less predictability. Um, you know, obviously, you know, sometimes that that can create some uncertainty on our own part. Um, but that's, you know, for instance, that's what practice was about today. Like there was no defense. We were five on zero scripting, going through different actions with with terminology that we put in. You know, that is uh, that is different than what we've we done in the past, um, and uh, you know just asking guys to make reads off of each other, you know as as A happens B's got to happen, as B happens C's got to happen, you know and just trying to teach them intelligent movement through randomness, um, you know something we are preaching this year. Is that more feasible because of the experience of your roster? Uh, yeah, I think well you know the experience the IQ I think uh, allows that, but. It really is just, um, you know, the last couple of years we've been very post ISO heavy, and we will be some, you know, this year because of the, you know, the, the weapons that we have, um, you know. But I think you're seeing throughout the league that you know, a lot of more space and randomness, you know, is difficult to guard, and you know we're just trying to tap into that some. What's sort of the roadmap from today till Tuesday in terms of practice, your ground and stuff? Like, like, how do you kind of navigate? Off this tomorrow, season? practice Sunday, Monday. Um, and we'll probably get a, a, a Staples walkthrough afternoon of uh, Tuesday's game. What about intensity level on Sunday, Monday? Heavy on Sunday, lighter on Monday. Harrison, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, Frank, you mentioned the cutting a second ago. It seemed like Russ was really actively trying to do that while he was on the floor with LeBron last night. Is that something that specifically you help like can really help those two fit together more so than even the rest of the roster yeah i mean i don't know if it's necessarily more so than the rest you know we uh, we just want to clear the elbows you know as much as we can and if that that means russ or, or rondo are up there great if that means you know Melo or or malik or or k nun or somebody like that is up there uh that's them too you know we want to give our our playmakers as much space as we can and um, you know, just just uh, emphasizing the movement of of those cuts, and then the reshapes out of those, you know, is something we're trying to get with all our guys. Because, sorry, you guys waived uh, Joel Ayi. Yes. Um, what are you kind of looking for um, with that freed up two way spot? Do you guys have a think that's going to be resolved here quickly? Or uh, we're going to give it some time. Uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly how much. We're going to continue to evaluate what's out there. Um, but we're not moving on it today. And we're hopeful that, that uh, Joel uh, rejoins us uh, with SPL uh, if he clears waivers. Um, you know, same with those other guys. And, um, you know, so we're just really looking for probably the, the best player. I ideal situation, you get a big and a big and a small. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessarily, uh, we want to get the two best players that we can, you know, guys that can fill in and help us if, uh, if we have injuries.